welcome to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. Hear and learn through the success of others how to build the life and business you deserve. Learn to overcome failure, what it means to seek out growth, and how to become the best possible version of yourself. And now, here's your host, coach, entrepreneur, husband and father, and author of the number one best-selling book, Survive, Scale, Soar, Jeremy Williams. And welcome back to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy, and I've got an amazing guest on today that was referred to me actually from somebody that I know, Julie Traxler, and, and thank you for this connection. Uh, it's going to be a great episode. I get a lot of questions about podcasting and how effective they are, what you should be doing, what are the trends, and why not have an expert on the on the show. And so today I have Jared Pace. He's a student at Arizona State University, and he's currently working on a thesis that is centered around entrepreneurs and podcasts. Welcome to the show, Jared. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm excited to be here. Yeah, no, I, I'm ex- I'm excited too. And uh, we had some great conversation before this, and and I I know the information you're going to share today is really going to benefit those that are tuning in. Uh, Jared, tell me a little bit about the thesis. What are you working on? Yeah, so I go to ASU. Um, I'm in their in their honors college, and they have a they make their undergraduates do thesis projects. And ASU prides themselves on uh, being leaders in innovation. So uh, my thesis focused around um, the business of promoting podcasts. So we're trying to solve that problem because podcasts by nature are very, very hard to promote. It's audio. It's an hour long. It's hard to scroll. Um, You can't really scroll through podcasts very well as you can do on YouTube videos or TikToks or whatever it is. Um, So we're trying to build um, a business plan or the best way to solve the problem of podcast promotion. That's awesome. Yeah, it's everybody has a podcast now, right? And so it's like, how do you make yours stand out amongst the noise? What are some of the things that you're finding? What, how do you, how do you have that breakthrough um, to where more people start tuning in to the podcast that you create? Mm-hmm. Of course. Um, when you're first starting out, um, the beautiful thing about podcasts is really about relationships. Um, like if someone's listens to your podcast, it's an usually a half an hour to an hour plus long. Someone's going to have a relationship with you or have a connection with you after that an hour. Um, of course, the difficult part is to have someone to listen to you for that hour. Um, and I would say at the beginning, it's really a manual process. You have, you talk to people, you, you create relationships with people to get your first 10, first 20, first 30. And then once you get into the hundreds, then there's more organic growth, more online growth um, that speeds up that process. Um, and if you would like, I can go more into uh, the organic online growth. Yeah, share with, share with me some of that information because I, I I know and I'd, I'd like for you also to kind of talk about how most podcasts might not make it through the first seven, eight episodes. True. Um, they call that pod fading. Um, we're usually by seven episodes, um, a huge chunk of podcasters die. And then at 20 episodes, a whole new chunk of podcasters die. I think by that point, 90% of them pod fade. Um, but if you get past those 20 episodes and be really consistent, the last five or 10% of podcasts will make it out. Um, and it really, uh, you have to go into it thinking that it's not going to be a quick process. It's it's extremely hard to go viral based off of 10, 20 podcasts. Um, as for online growth, um, while my thesis and my project have been focusing more on the social media type of things, I've discovered that there's so much more than just posting on Instagram, posting on TikTok, posting on YouTube to really grow your podcast. That you have podcast SEO of all things. I thought that was only for Google, but um, there's um, depending on who you go off of, there's different sources on how people um, discover podcasts. For example, based on um, the website the podcast host, they says 40% of people when they're trying to discover new podcasts is they go to the podcast directory. So you go to Spotify and you look in, let's say you want to learn about school. So you type in school or you type in academics or whatnot. And they ha- if you don't have those keywords in your podcast episode or show, it's not going to show up. So you don't want 
like there might be huge podcasts um, that make cute little titles, but or cute little episode descriptions. But you don't want that because no one, you know, most people don't have name recognition. So you want to be able to go based off of value and what you're offering in that episode rather than name recognition. So it kind of sounds like, you know, if you go back and, and I'm still a big blogger, is making sure that you have keywords in the title of your blog for the audience you want to reach and Absolutely. kind of putting on that hat of, you know, if I were getting on Google today and searching for what you have to offer, those keywords better be there. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely bloggers, uh, past bloggers and current bloggers have generally understand that concept a lot better and can have success in podcasting easier than most people. But they understand the importance of a title and description. So obviously you're, you're digging in deep with this thesis paper. What are some stats that have come up or what are some of the conversations that have come up in, in your research? Um, uh, SEO, as I discussed, um, and the importance of that. In terms of social media, um, I've discovered usually the uh, conversion rate is pretty low um, because let's imagine you're scrolling on Instagram and you see a clip of someone talking about business or talking about life. Um, it's pretty difficult to convert from a mindless scroll to an information binge for an hour. Because you want to look at visuals, you want to just be mindless. And it's like, I'm not going to go listen to a podcast about how to build my business right now because I just want to, to veg. So usually there's low conversion, but it's high exposure and it's high awareness. And it's very currently I'm working at a, actually at a billboard company as my um, full time job. And in the billboard industry, you run into the issue of, OK, cool. They see this giant picture, but they're not doing anything immediately. So there's a whole bunch hard uh, hard to track. And I kind of compare that to podcasts and social media. You're scrolling, you're aware of it, but it doesn't mean in that moment you're going to convert. Um, and same thing with billboards. People pay thousands and thousands of dollars for that exposure, but it doesn't mean in that moment someone's going to convert from seeing um, a sports drink on a billboard, but like, hey, I need to go buy a Gatorade right now. Um, however, it does provide um, value in that way. Um, another interesting thing to uh, that I've learned is the difficulty of knowing the value of a podcast if you're an advertiser. So, for example, the number one metric is downloads. So, how many downloads someone has? Like, okay, if they have a thousand downloads. That means I can get my get a thousand ears. Um, however, I recently um, there's recently came out some news about these fake downloads. So, these podcasters. They will um, make deals with um, game advertisements. And that would be a 20 or 30 second ad and just be their podcast. So these gamers, would, um, while playing their game, would have to listen to 30 seconds of their podcast. And that would count as a download. So it was a massive fluctuation of downloads that were fake or were only 30 seconds that provided no real value. So the only the most trusted metric of a value of a podcast is playthrough rate which to my knowledge is only provided by Apple Podcasts. Um, so if you have like a 1% playthrough rate, that means it's not an engaged audience. Um, Tracy Hazard from Politize, she brought to my attention um, much of this knowledge, but also about cancer survivor, um, a breast cancer survivor podcast that has 120% playthrough rate, which is incredible. So every time someone listens to it, that like you have that podcast, every, like, you know your entire audience is listening to it and 20% is listening to it twice because they're showing the friends, they need the support, they're engaged. And it doesn't matter how small the audience is, you know that audience will be impacted by wherever you advertise. Yeah, it's really powerful, dude. <laughs> you know, that's that's like an unbelievable metric. Uh, but to, to know that you have that that strong of an audience, that's that's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. What so so you're basically saying there are people out there that have podcasts that top these huge numbers. And the reality is, is the numbers might not be as big as they make them out to be. True. The, there are some people gaming the system. Absolutely. Yep. And so, you know, I get that question a lot. Being a guest on other podcasts is how many downloads do you have? You know, what's your playthrough rates? All these different things. And knowing that they may be talking to other individuals that they'd say, yeah, come on to my show. And they might not be really valid. Is that is that true? 
Um, can you repeat that question? As in people? Yeah. So people, guess people will. Yeah, when they when they make a judgment on having a guest, like I, I often get asked, like how many downloads they they want they want guests that are going to be on there that have influence, right? Oh, okay. And so they'll bring somebody onto the show. They may be bringing them on thinking they have the influence that they and they actually don't. Is that is that what you're saying by gaming the system? Um, that definitely is a poss- possibility of you see someone with fifty thousand downloads, while in reality they might just have ten thousand true downloads and that might that's um definitely cheating the advertisers that pay a fifty thousand dollar download premium or they go on your podcast and you're expecting okay i'm gonna have this influx of new listeners but they have a fifth of that um but ultimately i think it's audience to audience that if you listen to one of their podcasts and you know they provide genuine value to your audience i think it's worth it um which is content is king, the value add, I think to your audience is more important than that influx. That they might still be a genuine good podcast and providing really good value, but they might not have the audience that you think they have. So I guess it's a case by case basis on on how they fit your audience and your topic. Awesome. So there's probably people listening today that, you know, maybe they're thinking about doing a podcast. What have you found in your research has been that common thread with entrepreneurs? What made them do the podcast? Why did they want that to be part of their business? Um, a lot of people, as you mentioned, they, they saw the trend and they saw the value and many, mostly business people will see it as a way to accumulate, um, acquire new clients or to build that existing relationship, um, or they have knowledge and provide it. Um, on the business side of things, it's almost always people that want to acquire new business or develop relationships, um, or provide knowledge. Um, and there are definitely people that would do it for the fun, the, for the fun of it. Um, I know my, uh, my one of my partners, he was interviewing a podcaster and he did true crime and he just did it for the love of true crime. And, uh, it was, <laughs> and he was a, a person, um, uh, just living, I guess was living uh, alone and wanted to just express to the world his passion and love for true crime. and wasn't trying to make any money from it. All he was trying to do is cut costs from the software. Um, but primarily it's people to grow their business. Yeah. That's my wife probably listens to that podcast. I don't, uh, every time I turn around, she's listening to some sort of true crime podcast. So or true uh, crime has a huge following. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so, okay. So they, they do it because they see the trend. They know the value. Sometimes they might just do it because, because they enjoy it. Uh, why shouldn't somebody do a podcast? Um, I think with all things social media and communicating to other people, it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's not going to make you famous. Um, and if it does, it's years, years down the line. I think it has to be at least enjoyable and at least some sort of uh, passion or outside of the um, external reward. So pulling up, um, these some stats that we we're talking about pod fading. I found the stats here and it says 73% podcasters um, pod fade. So that um, I was mistaken earlier. It's episode three, 11 and 24 are the big milestones for every reason. And once you get past 24 episodes, you are doing much better. And I know personally, like my girlfriend and I want to start a podcast together and she, uh, I can't imagine, I, I not imagine, I know she doesn't want to do it for a business. I am naturally inclined to do it for a business. So whatever it is, I'm going to do against all the rules of podcasts is to not choose a niche and we just talk about whatever we want and we can have fun conversations and makes us talk. And if it's just fun, we can continue indefinitely. And I, there's these trio of guys that are doing their podcast and they're on episode, I think 30 or 40 and they've been consistent for weeks and weeks and 
they just make jokes and they make stupid jokes and they talk. And then one of them is like, yeah, I looked up our views and we have hundreds of people listening. Like, why are people listening to us? Like, we aren't providing any value besides telling dumb jokes. So they're doing it for fun, but they gain traction because of that. Um, well, I think it's probably they're doing it for fun, but I think for the audience, it's an outlet, right? It's, it's something outlet. they can plug into and it's not serious. It's not requiring a lot of brain power. They just get to enjoy Absolutely. it. Awesome. Um, so where do you see podcasts going? Uh, you know, podcast seems to be a trend right now. Uh, video was a big trend. It still, mm-hmm. still is in a way. Where do you see podcasts going in the future with businesses? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I think podcasts, um, because of the ease of consumption, um, will forever have that battle between podcasts um, and audiobooks and regular books. Um, in my opinion, that people, it's just so simple to listen to podcasts wherever you are driving or doing um, chores around the house, which are the two main ways um, people listen to podcasts. Um, I think there'll be in terms of the technology side of things, I think it'll be, there'll be easier ways to search podcasts as someone will crack the code of podcast search engines, um, and making it a very, very clear and productive way. There'll be greater clarity. I know people who are working on, um, making podcast advertisements more, um, reliable as an a more connected to the audience, but also B advertisers will know what's the value of the podcast and have better statistics um, because downloads are going to either have to become more consistent or more reliable or they have to go away for another metric as through, as for playthrough rates. So I think the clarity and the exposure of podcasts will continue to grow uh, and people will move past the top 10 list of looking at that, which top 10 lists, um, if we can dive into this, but aren't always truly the top 10. Sometimes um, podcast directories were um, usually for diversity reasons. We'll put in a new um, podcaster in the top 10 um, to add diversity to their directory. That's interesting. So, yeah, I think it's kind of still the wild, wild west. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think in in time it'll be be a lot more there might there's gonna be a lot more data and, and statistics to support decisions that are made by business owners using podcasts and i even see that with lipson is the company that i use to syndicate mm-hmm. is that their stats are, are they're improving on them all the time because there's not really a true they can't give the true stats and so they're working on improving and improving and i think in time there'll be more data there to make some better decisions I think you're right about that. Absolutely. Um, so the thesis, it's uh, it's coming up. When is that due? When do you have to? When do you and your team have to get this thing submitted? Um, it's it's due in May. So we've been working on it um, this entire fall and heading into this winter. And what we've been doing, we've been interviewing dozens of podcasters and people who listen to podcasters to really see how they see them and what are the issues podcasters run into, um, particularly with promotion. Um. And we've been validating our idea of how to solve that problem, um, at least a part of that problem. And then this winter, we will start coding the software and headed towards it. So what we're trying to do right now is create, um, it can be used for other purposes, but in terms of podcasters, it's a easy niche, easier niche to use this technology. So we try and do something called dynamic reposting. So for example, let's say it works especially well with the video. So you have, Jeremy, let's say you did a half an hour podcast and you posted on YouTube with a video. Um, you can take that half an hour video and you can make it into short form video into TikTok or Reels. You can take that audio, make it into blogs, take that um, blog text and do clip and do um, little quotes and do t- onto Twitter or whoever replaces Twitter if that <laughs> with all the chaos going on. Um, and then you can even do images and post on Instagram or whatnot. Um, so you have, and then you can reuse content and reform it and reshape it. So you have a one sort content source that can turn into dozens of different pieces and fill out your content calendar throughout the year. So it really helps expose 
um, a podcast into onto social media that really gets more ears and more downloads, more playthroughs. Um, so it turns a podcaster into really a media company. And that's kind of what we're starting to develop. And we realized that most podcasters hate marketing. They just, they don't like to do it. They want to talk and connect with people and provide value. Um, but after all that time being drained of doing all that hard, I guess, mental work and physical work that they just want to click submit and it goes everywhere it needs to go. The syndication is complete. Yeah. That, you know, that makes me think of like uh, Gary V. I'm sure you've, you're aware of that guy and and just uh-huh. like, the, you know, he talks about the the market deck, the 64 uh, piece marketing deck that you can create from one piece of content. So it sounds like what you're doing is creating a piece of software that takes the podcast and turns it into the multiple pieces and it automates that process for the entrepreneur. Absolutely. That's exactly what we're going for. And there's many different other things we would love to build, but we had to focus on one thing and that's um, what our developer was capable of. So <laughs> yeah, as with any business, you, the, the riches are in the niches and it's always good to focus on one thing and not 20 things. Um, you'll find a lot more success there. So Absolutely. how, if, if somebody wants to learn more about what you're doing on your, on your thesis, or maybe uh, I know you're interviewing podcasters out there to gain more information for this. Uh, what's the best way for them to reach you? Um, you can reach me by, by email. And we also have a website that is currently being developed. It's in very much the, the baby stages. Um, my email is jkpace2 at asu.edu. Uh, if you feel to email me any questions or concerns, or if you want me to talk to you um, and be part of my research for podcasters, I, I'd be more than happy to talk to you. Um, and the name of the idea is Mink Social. Um, and minksocial.com is the website. Um, we chose Mink Social because I am a big marketing guy and I will always want a cute animal in my marketing that. People just love animals. And I think minks, the name was available and uh, little minks are cute. So that's part of our logo. Awesome. I think everybody listening is going to remember that. So (laughs) animals, cute, small mink, right? Minksocial.com is where you'll be able to connect with with Jared. Well, Jared, thank you for taking time today. Uh, Mm -hmm. Some great information uh, that I know the audience is going to listen to today that are maybe they do have a podcast Mm -hmm. currently and you help them have a breakthrough or maybe they're thinking about building a podcast for their business and you gave them some insight on, you know, what they need to be doing now and into the future to be successful with that. So I appreciate you sharing that, Jared. I know there's a lot of value in that. Thank you very much. I, I hope I helped someone today. Awesome. Until next time, onward and upward. Thank you for listening to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. If you heard something that made a difference in your life today, share it with someone that might benefit and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Learn more about the host of this podcast and coaching services offered by Red Hawk Coaching by visiting www.redhawkcoaching.com.